In Illustrator, we have the choice of using different colour modes. Each specific colour mode is suited for different purposes. The palette of colours that we have available will reflect the colour mode that we use. I'm going to reference the colours available to us via the colour panel in Illustrator and I'll cover each in order as they appear. Grayscale mode, which I have applied to these three circles already, can be found in the options of the colour panel at the top. Grayscale mode simply uses black, or key as it's known, to generate various tones of grey and black. Usually upon white, whether it be the software canvas or printed media such as paper, Grayscale is a more accurate way to describe the commonly known, albeit debatable term, black and white. The grayscale scale is measured as a single percentage, 0% being white and 100% being black. RGB mode standing for red, green and blue gives us a range of colours which can be displayed on a lit screen. These screens might include LED, OLED, QLED, or LCD, and CRT. The colours are generated by mixing the base colours, red, blue, and green. RGB mode allows us to select very bright colours, some of which look close to neon, due to the fact that the light of the screen can bolster their brightness. Whilst other colours might not be an issue, these very bright RGB colours, known as out of gamut colours, cannot be printed. It's therefore recommended that RGB mode is only used if we are designing specifically for a display, especially if these bright colours are to be present in our designs. An RGB colour consists of three values, for red, blue and green, each ranging from 0 to 255, representing zero to full saturation. Next is HSB. HSB stands for Hue, Saturation and Brightness. It's a system used for creating RGB colours more intuitively, by means of how we communicate colour. Hue is the quality of the colour, or the colour itself, Saturation is the intensity of the colour, and brightness is the amount of black which is mixed into the colours. Brightness, however, is a controversial term, since different colours have different true brightnesses at the same levels, so the term value is sometimes substituted instead. Therefore, many people regard the HSB mode to be HSV standing for hue, saturation, and value. A HSB colour is represented by three numbers. Saturation and brightness use a scale of 0 to 100%, whereas hue uses a scale from 0 to 360. 360 being no coincidence as the number of degrees in a circle. Therefore, the HSB mode, or HSV, is employed more effectively by actually using a circular model, known as the colour wheel, from which colours can be selected. Next we have CMYK mode. CMYK mode, standing for cyan, magenta, yellow and key, is a colour mode which uses four base colours to generate a whole range of colours. These are the same colour inks commonly found in printers, especially those found in the home or the office. For clarity, the K standing for key means black. Black is the key colour, or key plate known in older terms, which means that it's an important colour used to give contrast to the combinations of the other colours. In layman's terms, more of the black gives a dark colour and less of it a light colour. CMYK mode in Illustrator does not allow us to venture into the brights previously mentioned in RGB mode, which cannot be replicated in ink. Instead, we're kept in the safe zone, and though the judgement is still rough 
due to screen calibrations, what we see on screen is close to what we'll typically get when we print. CMYK mode is perfectly acceptable to develop graphics for screens. Though as mentioned, it is exempt from the overly bright colours. A CMYK colour is measured as a percentage for each one of its four primary colours, from 0% to 100%, representing zero to full saturation. Next we have WebSafe RGB. WebSafe RGB is a range of colours within the RGB mode, which are compatible with mainstream browsers, which follow the hexadecimal colour protocol. And we can observe the hexadecimal restrictions placed upon the RGB palette as we move the sliders, with each increment of colour denoted by numbers, letters or both. Due to the advance in technology, WebSafe RGB mode has little to no use to the modern designer unless they are designing specifically for older and or limited platforms. So having expended this list, we still have a very relevant colour mode to cover, and this is Pantone. The range of Pantone palettes, or swatches as they are known, can be found by going to Window, Swatch Libraries, Colour Books, and then selecting a Pantone swatch therein. The Pantone colour system, also known as the Pantone matching system, is perhaps the most effective and reliable colour mode. This is largely due to the fact that Pantone colours do not comprise of a mix of colours. Rather, each Pantone colour is its own individual and exclusive medium. In turn, this eliminates potential for colour deviation and therefore substantiates considerably accurate colour something which is highly sought after in many applications, including graphic design, branding, fashion design, product design, and printing in general. Users of Pantone may reference physical books, sheets, or tags marked with the literal Pantone medium. Therefore, in communication, this standardization of color leaves only potential variable traits of the human eye to be a factor, otherwise everyone sees the same colour. A Pantone colour is represented by either numbers or letters, or both, and or an actual name, such as bright orange or medium blue. There are also several palettes available, including pastel and metallic colours, coated and uncoated, to name but a few examples. Coated and uncoated are intended for print on glossy and non-glossy paper. So to summarise, with those colour modes covered, you might feel somewhat overwhelmed. In which case, I'd issue the bottom line. Concern yourself only with CMYK mode for now. It's very possible that you won't deviate from CMYK mode anytime soon, or even in the future. CMYK mode, as stipulated, will allow you to print accurately and produce graphics for on-screen use. If you do use RGB mode, that's fine too. Just keep a lookout for the out-of-gamut warning when you pick certain bright colours, since these colours will not print as you see them on screen. If you wish to print, haven't selected an out of gamut colour, if you click upon the out of gamut warning, Illustrator will find the next safe printable colour, and it will be assigned to the selected object. I would actually suggest trying to print some RGB bright out of gamut colours, so that you can see firsthand what I refer to. I've included an Illustrator document in the resources with a range of out-of-gamut colours for you to print on your printer, which I'll take liberty to assume uses CMYK inks. Once printed, note how different the inks look on paper in relation to the actual bright colours on your screen. 
With that witnessed, you'll be able to identify such colours if they ever arise, and you can decide what kind of action is appropriate in accordance with your project. So that wraps up colour modes. Besides consulting the resources to do your test print, be sure to experiment with the various colour modes, using the sliders in the colour panel to see how each functions and responds. Experience of colour modes, regardless if we use them or not, is always valuable knowledge to us as graphic designers.